Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to those who are on Facebook, YouTube, uh, Zoom, and uh, today is our first uh, English session uh, with Brenda Boti Hong. And so we have a little bit of technical difficulty. Difficulty. Those who are on Insight Timer, you will see that everything is mirror image. So when uh, Brenda Boti Hong put up the PowerPoint, uh, it's going to be very confusing. So uh, for this week, it would be best that if you um, uh, also watch it on the YouTube or Facebook, and then only use the Insight Timer to ask questions, and most importantly, to make donation. Uh, I don't usually ask for donation, but this time I will. All the donation would go towards supporting the, um, the prison dharma. Um, and uh, anyway, uh, those who are out on Insight, Insight Timer, uh, Wendy, can, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you just say yes or no? Okay, good. Very good. Thank you. So um, to save time, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Venerable Di Hong, and uh, I will save the introduction uh, uh, later, and uh, most of you probably already Google him. So I'll, I'll just go ahead and turn it over to uh, Venerable Di Hong now. Welcome to our show, Venerable Di Hong. And uh, seems like we just saw each other on Sunday. Oh, we did see each other on Sunday. Okay, no, no wonder. In the prison. <laughs> okay, yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, good evening, if you are from uh, California. Or good morning or good afternoon. Um, I, since today is our first session, I'd like to give a short introduction of what mindfulness is and what the practice is about. And then, you know, I do that for probably around half an hour, and then I will guide a th a 20 minute meditation uh, and then I will leave 10 minutes or more uh, for Q&A and it depends on how this class goes and the Q&A session I can adjust the time accordingly all right um, anyway I will start with a PowerPoint um, but I won't necessarily repeat what's in the PowerPoint because you guys can have the file and read it if you like. <clears throat> and I just want to give a sh very, very brief and short introduction of the 37 factors of enlightenment uh, and then followed by mindfulness and then, you know, with the mindfulness meditation. The reason for the 37 factors of enlightenment is that most of the factors listed here involved uh, mindfulness. And you see that the mindfulness or this, sometimes I use the term awareness because in, in Buddhism or in, in doing meditation, we use the term interchangeably. Um, so just so that you guys don't get confused. But anyway, in, in the Buddha, uh, when he gave this talk, he basically mentioned that in order for anyone, uh, especially for the spiritual seeker. And again, I want to emphasize that you don't have to be a Buddhist to do this. Uh, but for those who are Buddhist, this is going to be helpful. 
uh, in terms of your spirituality, in terms of your making progress. So the Buddha basically said that you should, with, with the 37 factors of enlightenment, that these, the practitioners, the spiritual seekers should practice, develop, and make a lot of them. And that your spiritual life may last long and endure for a long time. And that it will not just benefit yourself, but also benefit others and also for the happiness of many people. Out of compassion for the world, for the welfare, benefit and happiness of divinities and men. And this is taken from the Maha Parinibbana Sutta in the Diga Nikaya 16. And here is the list of the 37 factors. And I believe that they are divided into seven categories. Uh, it starts with the four foundations of mindfulness, the four right efforts, the four bases of mental power, the five faculties, the five powers, basically spiritual powers, um, the seven factors of enlightenment that some of you might have heard about it because it has been talked about by a lot of t uh, Dharma teachers. And lastly, the Eightfold Path. All of this added to 37. And you see that the word mindfulness in green uh, is uh, mentioned or used eight times. Even though the four right efforts and the four bases of mental power don't have mindfulness in it, but it does require it does require mindfulness. And also the Buddha in, in another sutta, the Sambodhi Sutta from the Anguttara Nikaya, the Buddha also mentioned the nine qualities uh, for a person to practice the 37 factors of enlightenment. Um, and these are very common too, that, you know, that one must have admirable friends, that one's behavior must be virtuous, meaning observing the training rules. Let's say for a lay person, you have five precepts or eight precepts, or the, then with, for monks and nuns, we have, depending on the traditions, from something around 200 to 350. Uh, hearing talk that is sobering and conducive to your understanding. Um, and one must make an effort in abandoning anything that is unskillful in, when it comes to your mind state and also develop wholesome mental qualities. Has developed the wisdom of rising and passing away, contemplation on the unattractiveness attractive to abandon loss. This is regarding to the body. Develop goodwill and abandon ill will or resentment or hatred. Practice mindfulness of in and out of breathing to remove distractive thinking or the, to prevent the mind from wandering. And, also, and lastly, the perception of impermanence to uproot the conceit, I am or me or my. So these are the qualities that are needed for the practitioners, for meditators, as well as for any spiritual seekers. In from my perspective, uh, ever since that I became a monk, uh, I started just by the way, I started with the Pure Land tradition where we used to chant a lot, like three to six hours a day. Um, but ever for the past, at least 10 years, ever since I volunteered in the prisons, I focus more on the mindfulness practice and meditation. And that as some of you might have heard about MBSR, meaning basically the course that was developed by John Kabat-Zinn, uh, it was used to basically reduce stress. But here in, in the context of my talk, and practices, um, 
mindfulness go mindfulness goes beyond reducing your stress. It will improve all aspects of your life and the quality of your relationships with your family, uh, spouses, you know, friends and others. And also, if you follow the, let's say, uh, some of the 37 factors of enlightenment as taught by the Buddha, it can lead to awakening or enlightenment. And so tonight, I just want to start with this book, Mindfulness and Plan English. I think that some of you might have known about this. I have given almost a thousand copies of these books to the folks inside the prison because this book is uh, Bhante Guna Ratana makes it so simple and easy to understand the process of how to med the the process of how to meditate, um, what mindfulness is and the differences between mindfulness and concentration and how to apply mindfulness in your daily activity. Basically, once you are not meditating, meditating off the cushion, that's the term that we used, how do you bring mindfulness to your life? Um, basically, the book is divided into 16 chapters. The first nine chapters are about the basic what mindfulness is and how to ve develop uh, a sitting properly. And then 10 to 12, they deal with problems and destruction. And this is important. I think I will talk about it in our third session, which is going to be in September, um, because most of us, according to CDC, 90% of Americans, and I'm speaking, you know, in, in, in for folks in the U.S. mainly, 90% of the population experience one form of adverse childhood experience, uh, experienced, or AECE, um, that can have an effect on your ability to be mindful, to stay focused. And um, I will address that, I think, um, you know, over future uh, talks. And then the main chapters of this book are 13 and 14, which is mindfulness and concentration. 15 and 16, he basically, you know, shows us like how we can apply mindfulness, how to be mindful in each moment or in each activity that we are doing. And the last part, which is kind of quite helpful, is he explains the power of loving friendliness or the, the term that we frequently use is loving kindness or goodwill by Dani Saobiku or the Pali term is Metta. So I'm going to go directly into chapter 13, if you guys don't mind, um, because this is the core of, of mindfulness. <clears throat> so mindfulness, according to Bhante Guna Ratana is non-judgmental observation, is the mind's ability to observe without judging, without reacting, without commenting, without criticism. Um, accept it, you know, when a thought comes up or whatever that you experience, accept it as it is. Try not to suppress, try not to repress, uh, try not to add anything to it or, or, or reject it. So in, in meditating, when you are observing some, something, notice the impermanence or the constant changing nature of an object, the unsatisfactoriness and the selflessness of the object. It also means, you know, uh, mindfulness, watch, uh, impartial watchfulness, without concept, basically mindfulness is bare attention. It also means present moment awareness. Just observe what is happening right now. Um, I also want to make a note of the difference between a thought and thinking of a thought. So when you meditate, when you ground your awareness in the breath, let's say, as your object. And when something is arising, 
and you let's say a thought or an experience or an image and that there is that's a thought because there is a sense of what we call mental distance from it and then that thought passes by now in this example when you remember a best friend you know that is memory it come he or she comes up it's just memory when you are aware that you are remembering and that is what we call mindfulness that you are remembering right now a friend your best friend comes up however when you start to get involved you are like oh i am remembering and you know and that is thinking because you're going to start like oh this is mike or oh, this is susie you know we went to school back in second grade this and that boom you lose it you lose your you lose your awareness or mindfulness because you get you start to get involved with this memory that is thinking okay i hope that makes sense mindfulness is also e egoist or non-egoistic alertness because there's no such thing as self right so let's say you are sitting you try to sit cross legged and and like five minutes later you notice this pain in your knees right and you say oh i'm in pain noticed that you have this i identify that this is my with mindfulness what you do is you say there is pain not i am in pain that is the difference and of course you certainly want to adjust your position just so that you don't the pain does not continue that is the key of mindfulness there, there is no such thing as you are sitting in rigid posture for 20 30 or, or an hour without moving no uh don't do that as long as you feel the pain anywhere in the body as you are sitting and that it it let's say it lasts more than two or three minutes and and it's overwhelming then stop you know change slowly mindfully change your position do not try to get through it to sit through it because it could be harmful to your body that's the key to remember um you don't add or subtract anything to what you noticed or to what you perceive that comes up from your mind or basically from your conscious mind or from your unconscious mind um you are aware of change right because as you are sitting the the one factor in the background behind is time time is constantly flowing your experience your awareness depending on your mind depending on your practice can be lost or can be deepened so that's what we call the passing flow of experience but when you are aware of it you have this what we call mindfulness and over time you are able to see with every experience that you have or any object that you come into encounter you notice the both the growth the maturity of all phenomena everything comes into birth everything comes into decay and then passes by or what we call die i try not to use the term die because i'm not uh, you know i just don't want to uh scare you guys away and mindfulness also help you see how, how things make you feel and how you react to it and how it also affects others so in mindfulness when you are when you are doing it you are the unbiased observer put aside the color judgment or or any past experiences that you have let them be try not to impose them in your perception in how what you perceive okay um you also keep track of the passing 
show of universe within the universe within here within your body and mind your thoughts your feelings your experiences your perceptions and others etc and mindfulness means that you are you it basically means that you are the participant as well as the observer at the same time so in mindfulness as you are doing it mindfulness involve you know has these three fundamental activities the first one is that mindfulness reminds you of what you are supposed to be doing let's say you're meditating a thought comes up and then when you allow when you react to that thought the moment that you recognize that you already react to it that moment is what we call mindfulness is that then you this mindfulness bring you back to the breath that you are meditating right now but don't get involved don't get lost in thoughts mindfulness see things as they really are and i'll explain a bit later as well and lastly mindfulness sees the true nature of all phenomena um think uh I i'm changing a little bit so think of your mind as a garden okay where you in your mind you have wholesome mind states or positive mind states versus unwholesome mind states or negative mind states okay so let's say for unwholesome anger resentment ill will jealousy any of that are considered unwholesome wholesome states are mindfulness concentration loving kindness compassion equanimity all of that so i'm just so so tonight you know i i'm putting two circles here the m stands for mindfulness the c stands for concentration and, and these two let's say if you for for anyone who is new to meditation or mindfulness um when someone is constantly reacting to things that they perceive they don't have a lot of mindfulness or awareness but when you meditate the more mindful you are that circle will be getting bigger you are cultivating you are planting this seed of mindfulness and the more you do it the 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 stronger and the deeper it will grow same as concentration that this is my point i'm as i trying to use it as as a metaphor so going back to the three fundamental activities of mindfulness so during meditation when your mind wanders away when you realize that then you yourself you that is that mindfulness you bring your mind back to the breath or sometimes i also use your attention here when you're meditating i would say your attention uh when you lose it that means that your mind is gone i hope that makes sense you know so when you are thinking reacting judging chattering or you know what we call this inner critic when all of that happening then what when you realize that then you know bring patiently bring your mind bring your attention back to the breath and continue whether you using your breath as the object of attention or other objects depends on your preference depends on your practice or strength so in in during meditation you are basically cultivating mindfulness concentration even patience when you're not meditating what we call off the cushion you can still cultivate mindfulness when you are constantly being mindful in each activity and it helps to bring always your attention to the breath the second uh fundamental activity is seeing things as they are whatever that comes up you see it as it is without distortion not adding not subtracting let's say you know um as you're setting an image comes up uh, an image of a puppy right because let's say you remember that you were walking in the neighborhood you notice a puppy 
then now as you're meditating, it may come up. All you have to do is notice that, but don't say, oh, you know, um, that was similar to my dog. Then you start to get involved. You want to stop that. You just notice that puppy and let it go. The last one, which is really important, is to see the true nature of all phenomena. And this is the power of mindfulness. Um, that so that in case if you're new to, to uh, Buddhism, um, the, Buddha, the Buddha basically said all conditioned things are inherently transitory. Every worldly thing is in the end unsatisfying. And the last one is that there are no entities, no objects that are unchanging or permanent only process and this is the core of mindfulness that when you practice you'll be able to see this the true nature of everything and this also includes um your interaction with people your encounters with people your relationships so basically here mindfulness is a process it, but it does not occur or, or take place in step. It's according to Bhante Gunaratana, it's a holistic process that occurs as a unit. Um, when you noticed that you lose that awareness or that mindfulness, that noticing itself is the result of mindfulness of your practice. So mindfulness is bare attention and bear attention is noticing things exactly as they are without distortion. And that is the impermanence, the constantly changing nature, the selflessness, because there's nothing that is absolute that stays the same. And in the end, everything is unsatisfying. Now, the so that, that, that what I just discussed is what we call mindfulness. The practice is what we call insight meditation or vipassana. Vipassana is a Pali term, which means insight. So meditation is a practice, it's a formal training. You know, when you're sitting or standing or walking or lying down, you are, do, you are formally training this mindfulness, basically this mental muscle of your mind or the seat or the mental quality one of the mental qualities uh in your mind and and when for meditation as you're doing it your mind is in the state of kindness and alertness and the practice of meditate my uh, insight meditation it enables you to have insight to see things clearly so um, there are four foundations of mindfulness. The first one is mindfulness of the body. That's what we're going to talk about for the next few sessions. And then there's mindfulness of feeling, mindfulness of the mind, mindfulness of my object or mindfulness of phenomena. So this is my drawing. I'm sorry, I, I'm not an artist and my drawing can be <laughs> sleep, sloppy. So let's say as you start sitting, right? Let's say you start at time zero from right to left. At the beginning, you will notice that there are lots of thoughts that come up even within a, 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 a time frame of one second. One thought after another that comes up. And all you have to do is recognize it and then let it go recognize it and let it go you don't get involved no matter how important it is the only thing that i like i said earlier in chapter 10 to 12 let's say if something that comes up that is traumatic or powerful that it keeps coming back then when you're not after you, your meditation then you want to take some time to investigate that's what we call contemplation okay but when you're sitting over time uh over weeks you know it, your mind will slow down, meaning that it will take a bit longer for thought to come up. So in terms of practice, I think I have like two minutes left. 
you know, take your posture properly. You don't have to sit cross leg in chapter one to nine. Uh, you see different types of posture. The one that works for me, uh, I don't sit cross leg. By the way, I sit the uh, the Burmese style, meaning that my the both of my legs are parallel. My left leg uh, folds in inside, and my right leg is outside, and both are touching the ground. But sometimes, because of the way that our bodies are built, uh, it's hard to put the knees on the ground. So they may be hanging mid air. So what you want to do is you want to put two cushions on underneath uh, underneath your legs, or you can sit on a chair. You are not required to sit on a cushion or on the floor. Whatever that makes you feel comfortable. What is important that you want your your back, your chest to be straight, so that your lungs can hold enough air for the whole sessions. And then, what you do is you bring your attention or your awareness to the breath, and and so here your breath serves as the anchor, meaning that every time you react to a thought or you. A lost in thoughts. When you recognize it, that is awareness, and you bring it back to the breath. And here I'm using the breath as an object. You can use other objects as your focus, as your anchor. And all you have, and here, you know, all you have to do is be aware of the in breath and out breath. You can, at the beginning, you can follow it, but over time, you also want it to let go of. Being aware of it, you just breathe normally. Because once you get into deep concentration, you don't even notice the breath. So what is the point of paying attention to it? I don't want you to freak out because like you can't feel your breath. Uh, you know, so that's the key. Um, what you do is you know, no, when you notice your mind wandering away, patiently bring it back. When your mind is lost in thoughts, bring it back. Every time you have to do it a thousand times, a million times, just bring it back. Do not judge or criticize yourself, uh, because you know all of us. The nature of our mind is wandering. You cannot, let's say, you cannot focus, and 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 you can count your breath. So for each in breath and out breath, you count one to two to five, and then reverse count. This way, you force the mind to be with the breath. You can repeat a mantra, a prayer. You can use a mala or a beat. You know, basically, you hold the mala, hold one beat at a time. As you breathe in, your next breath, you go to the next mala, and feel the sensations. If your hands are held together, you can even feel the sensation of your hands. And usually, it's warm. Sometimes it's cool, depending on your body.、Um, you can put your hands on your tummy and feel the movements. You know, and also if you. If you have, you know, bare feet, put your bare feet on the ground and feel the contact, the cooling effect of the ground, the stillness or the stability of the ground. That is how you ground your attention in the body.、Um, I think、uh, these are pretty straightforward. I, 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 another metaphor that I want to use is, I, I, it took me forever to find this picture. Basically, when you're meditating, when you notice a thought, let it go. Don't get lost in that thought. You know, you can see that if you jump, when you notice a car and you jump into that car, you lose that awareness, you lose that mindfulness. So think of your, as a metaphor, think of the meditation practice as watching the traffic. One thought comes by, one thought comes up, let it go. Another thought comes up, let it go. I don't care how attractive or how powerful that thought is. You know, let it go. That's the process. There are also, you know, walking, meditation, standing, lying down. But tonight, for 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 in our context of our class, I would just do the sitting,、uh, and that is it. I think I will stop here, and、um, I will guide through a meditation、uh, for some twenty minutes, and then、uh, we'll do Q and A. Okay. So、uh, take your posture, whether you are sitting. Or lying down, or standing, and take a few deep breaths. As you breathe in, notice that your body may tense up a little bit because 
your lungs are filled with air, so it takes an amount of energy. But when you breathe out, it takes no energy, and that's how you're able to relax your whole body and let go of your thoughts, let go of your thinking. You can take as many deep breaths as you like. Then allow your body to settle into your posture. Feel the contact between your posture and the chair or the cushion that you're sitting on. And let's start with a smile. Notice how you feel when you smile and how that feeling gives rise to the physiological sensations in your body. And notice that the feeling, the sensations are quickly fading away. How you feel next depends on the mind, your body, or both, or what you do next. Since we are going to do the breath meditation, so let's bring your attention to the breath. And all you have to do is notice the in-breath and the out-breath. Basically, ground your attention in the breath. When you hear the sound of the charm, just remember where you are when you hear it. Basically, your mind. Is your mind with the breath? Or is your mind wandering away? Just notice in-breath and out-breath. Then you also notice that your out-breath is somewhat longer than your in-breath. So as you breathe, you notice that your body breathes by itself. There's no one controlling it. At the beginning, you're kind of like forcing the body to take a few deep breaths just to regulate and re-energize the body and relax the body. But you cannot keep forcing your body to breathe the way that you want. Your body does it by itself, naturally. When you realize that your mind wanders away, patiently bring it back to the breath. One way to ground the mind in the breath is to count your breaths. So as you are breathing in and out, you count one, the next breath, two, you go to five, and then reverse count from five back to one. You may miscount or you may count past five. That means that somehow in between your mindfulness is lost in thoughts or wanders away. It's okay. Try not to judge yourself. Patiently bring the mind, bring your attention back to the breath.
If you have a favorite mantra or prayer that works for you, that keeps the mind in the breath, you can go ahead and use it as well. You can also feel the sensations of your hands holding together or touching body. Then you pay attention to the sensation as you breathe in and out. If you hear something in your environment, you can make a note of it, but don't react to it or judge it. That is mindfulness. You can also put your hands in your tummy. and feel the rising and falling of your tummy because of your in-breath and out-breath. And smile when you remember. This is a fabrication, but it does give you an alertness. and feeling pleasant. When your mind is able to stay with the breath, longer, then your concentration is stronger. Your mindfulness is deeper because it's a way of thoughts and noise but not reacting to any of them. This is how you build up your concentration and mindfulness. So when you focus on the breath, that is concentration, another mental quality of the mind, a wholesome mind state. Whatever thought that comes up, let it rise and let it pass. No need to react to it or trying to figure out why it comes up. You can think of yourself as if you were standing on the street, the cars are going by one at a time. You let it go by. When you stay with the breath, you're also aware of your posture. Make sure that you're not slouching. If you noticed any tension in the body, you can make a note of it 
and let it go. Come back to the breath. When you make a note of it, it's what we call mental labeling. That's what we do at the beginning as you practice. Even if you notice pain, you can just label it pain. If your, the pain is lasting more than two minutes or so, then slowly, mindfully adjust your posture. Notice your breath in and out. Whatever that you hear, including my instruction, try not to react to it. Stay with the breath. Whatever that comes up in your mind, let it rise and let it pass. You notice that each thought tells you a different story. And most of these stories are not true. And this is coming from the storytelling mind or your inner critic saying a lot of things about you. All you have to do is be aware of all these stories and then let them go because most of these stories are not true. They're not your reality. Notice the strength of your concentration, meaning that you're able to stay with the breath longer than two breaths, or three, or four, or five, without being distracted. So for the next few minutes, let's sit in silence and just continue to stay with the breath to cultivate mindfulness and concentration.
let's check in with your mind to, to see how subtle it is that your mind is less reactive, less wandering, more subtle, clear. Your feeling, sensations in your body, and how you express your feeling and sensations is what we call emotions. Your quality of mindfulness, concentration, and patience. This ended our guided meditation. It was a good 18 minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Venerable. Um, that was a very, that was a success. <laughs> we, probably, we have, we, well, right now we have a 92 students on Insight Timer, 92, and then probably um, uh, quite a few more on YouTube and, um, and Facebook. But um, I think everyone enjoys that. That was a good um, uh, first time. Uh, we're going to try to do that on the first available Wednesday of the month. When I say available is that um, it would be the first Wednesday except when we're traveling, then it will be whatever first available Wednesday. Um, there's a bunch of questions. I, I did text it, text them to you. Oh. Okay, okay, but let me go ahead and, and just uh, um, uh, repeat them on, the, on this so everyone can hear them. So basically we have two very, very similar questions um, asked by Martha and then concur by uh, uh, Lucia and then also another question asked by Rebecca which is what we call either on one end called the lazy zen and then the other one is the monkey zen that is how do we keep ourselves from falling to sleep that's one question and then the other question is that how do we keep our mind from monkeying around and going all over, all over the place Okay, um, for the first question, how to keep from dropping off to sleep? Basically, as you meditate, as you start, you want to find the time that your body is uh, fresh or, or rested and your mind is clear. Um, I will start with that. If you doing it in the middle of the day or something, when you have been doing a lot of work, then your body may get tired. Um, that is what we, I think that's what is one of the five hindrances, you know, um, that almost everyone experiences. You just have to test around, uh, where, uh, when, when that works for you. If the other thing that I would do is even as you are falling to sleep, you can go, you know, open your eyes or um you know go wash your face or something and also try not to eat before you meditate usually you want to take uh wait like at least two hours or at least an hour or so before you meditate and also it also depends on the bo on your body how tired it is and also sometimes it's the mind because if you are doing a lot of thinking writing or any of that that can be mentally exhausted and that could also cause your you to be drowsy or falling to sleep so i'm familiar with some of these issues you know unless there are other things that i'm not aware of so so that's my take to it um to rebecca the monkey mind actually that's everyone that's why the buddha said you know our mind is like <clears throat> the monkey mind or the or the wild horse you know, because it's uncontrollable and it's okay. It depends on your life experiences in the past. Um, all you have to do is be patient with yourself. Allow yourself to open to this practice. Um, think of, let's say, you know, let's say if you have a, a, a little baby, you know, he or she is crawling around the house or opening the door to the street, to, to outside, right? All you have to do is tending to this baby. So with mindfulness, you are tending to the mind. Okay, you're wondering, come back to the breath. Next breath. If you can do it the first time, you can do it with one breath, you're good already. If you're really good, your mind can stay with two breaths. So, so try not to judge yourself. That's the key is to... to the self-judging, self-criticism, uh, be aware of 
be aware of those and and let them go um once you get a hang of it it will you will be able to uh slow the mind down and it will not wonder as often it took me a year or so for my mind not to be a monkey mind so, so you know so my advice is you know be very very patient to yourself um i have been teaching in the prison since 2013 so by august it's going to be 10 years uh the reason i part of me at the beginning was to give back to society because i have gotten so much from this country and um you know i went to college for free i also got my phd everything else and my thought was to give back uh and you know and but once i got in i continued just because i noticed the trauma that this population suffer and that kept me to continue um the the thing about i am is consider consider it's just because i we have a tendency to say oh this is all about me so when you notice something in the body like you know pain right then you say oh i am in pain uh, and, and it's kind of like you identify with that pain and that you must fix it that you need to get it resolved now in a sense it's kind of like egoistic as well and all you have to, whatever that you noticed during the meditation whatever challenge or problems that you noticed just label it as it is as an experience without identifying with it because when you identify it with it it doesn't help let's say you know when you notice if you notice anger sit with it not like i am angry let that go you just notice this anger especially taking your hand will say just sit with it allow notice how it feel notice the feeling and notice how it affects your body the sensations associated with the feeling of anger but it's not like me this is my anger no you want to let that go that's the key um venerable let me let me repeat the questions um because outside on facebook and youtube they don't actually see the questions mm -hmm. so the question you a you answer are the ones that uh, was asked by et which is mm -hmm. how long have you been teaching in prisons you answer that what led you to teach in prisons you answer that uh, and then and then why do i am considered a conceit which you also answer now he added another question is which is why did you devote yourself to buddhism it seems like he's auditioning to write your biography <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, well, you know, I, I was born in Vietnam, by the way, and I grew up in a Buddhist, I mean, Vietnam, uh, you know, with Buddhism as the dominant religion. So most, most folks in like almost 80% of people in Vietnam are Buddhist. And the actually, just so you guys know, before I became, I, I mean, I, I guess I was born into a Buddhist family and we, you know, were Buddhist, but uh, a few there were at a point in when I was in the US, I, I can't let trip away from it. I actually explore other religions, you know, Catholicism, even Protestant, I was actually baptized. You know, and, and I also took a course in Western religions. But the only one thing that works for me is Buddhism is how I how I identify with the Bu the Buddha's teaching, you know, and the practice, you know, that um, I try others uh, religion, but it it didn't work for me uh, so that's my my uh answer to your question yeah and then uh serenity asks a question which is if you drift if you drift off into thoughts that are positive and warm and wholesome do you still try not to get involved with them well you don't want to get involved because if you do then you are not building up you are not cultivating this mindfulness as I, I use the, the metaphor of a garden because you are you are lost in it and because when you're lost in it that because it makes you feel good then you may become attached to it or crave for more and then it can cause suffering because a lot of that does not come back that's the key is that whatever that you noticed when you're meditating 
let it come, let it go, let it rise, let it pass. You don't want to get involved with anything because most of these thoughts are in your conscious mind. You know, you still, what you want to do is you want to be able to get to your unconscious mind. If, you know, depending on your childhood or teenage years, uh, if you experience trauma or anything, we repress them into our unconscious mind. And that is something for any spiritual seeker, you want to be able to dig into it. So you don't want to get involved with anything when you are meditating. You just yeah. let it come and let it pass. Yeah, yeah, that's a, it's a very good question because yeah. a lot of times it kind of, it's kind of intuitive. If if I'm feeling good, isn't that what Buddhism is all about? Is isn't it there to relieve my suffering? So if I'm not suffering, I'm feeling good. What's wrong with that, right? Mm -hmm. But but the point is that um, you know, Buddhism as it was practiced twenty six hundred years ago, taught by the historical Buddha wasn't about feeling good. Mm -hmm. It's really about understanding the true laws of nature, which is um, um, something that we call um, uh, uh, impermanence. So even if you have good feeling, um, it will not be there forever. And so if you get attached to the feeling, then it's one side of the coin. It can easily flip to the other. When that feeling is gone, then that attachment quickly becomes aversion, mm -hmm. both of which are suffering, right? Yeah. So our job is to really understand uh, the nature as it is, which is impermanence. Yes. And we learn to be, equanimity is, is the key here, is that we just observe it as it is, as it is, right? Mm -hmm. As it is. So uh, I think it's a very good question. It's, it's somewhat counterintuitive. Um, let me see. Any other question? That um, that was a good one. Um, um, it's it's time. It's it's um, actually Venerable have another class coming up in in uh, in less than an hour, and and he probably hasn't even had his dinner yet, or or he's, or he's drinking his uh, his uh, his coconut juice. <laughs> I hate you know at four, so I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, if, if I, I can enter a couple more questions. Yeah. Okay. So quickly, um, any any um, any question? Um, I I look up. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, maybe in the future you need to. We need to somehow figure out how you can get onto the screen. But in any case, um, well, that was a good session. Uh, we have now a uh, total of 104 meditators um, listening uh, one, uh, on Insight Timer. Uh, lots of donations. Thank you so much for that. Um, I don't know, usually ask for donations, as you know, in my class, but here I do. Uh, I, I'm, I'm as much as ET is is auditioning to be um, uh, Venerable's biographer. I'm auditioning to be his uh, manager. So thank you, <laughs> thank you guys. So uh, thank you so much for the donation. You know, um, Venerable has five degrees. He was actually trained as engineer. He had a bachelor and a master in engineering. He worked. Um, for many many years, has some money saved up, um, and he's basically spending his uh, his retirement money right now. Uh, you're what a year from your um, retirement age? Mm -hmm. you can, two, years. <laughs> two years. Two years. Two years. Okay, you got it. It's a long way. It's a long yeah. way. So for now, he's he's really just emptying out his bank. Um, and there's he he visit um, five prisons right in Southern California. In Southern California, five. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and on on Sunday we travel to uh, essentially Northern California. If you're from Central, the, Chow, in Central, the city Central of Chowchilla, Modora County. Yeah. So he he travels a lot. He goes to he has uh, five prisons that he travels. Each one he might spend. Um, sometimes they, they separate the yard so they don't mix the prisoners. So uh, inmates, uh, not even inmates, they, they don't mix the incarcerated uh, uh, individuals. I, I, need, I need to learn the right to speak the right lingo here. <laughs> but in any case, um, you know, he, he in addition to the travel and 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 all that, he uh, he spends a lot of money um, buying stamps for the in, for the for, for the inmates to so that they can write to the outside. He brings a lot of books. Um, if permitted, he even bring food, but that's that's not always permitted. But uh, there are a lot of expenses involved. So I want to just thank you so much for 
the um, the donations. Actually, Inside Timer is pretty good. They only take seven percent for all the transactions. So it's a very very good way of of uh, uh, making your uh, your contributions and your support. M more importantly, not just the financial support, but the emotional support to constantly tell Venerable as if he needs it that you know he's doing good work. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. So how about we just uh, call it a day? And then uh, I'll make the announcement of when we're going to be meeting again. Uh, it would, we will try to do it once a month in the first available um, um, Wednesday. Wednesday night at the same time. So let me just turn off.